Hey guys, GWS here, and I'd just like to briefly break down this debate a couple weeks before it happens. There's actually two debates at Politicon. There is Cenk Uger versus Ben Shapiro, and then there's Anna Kasparian versus Ann Coulter. This is the more of the pre-pre-debate breakdown because I'm going to provide more information the day before, immediate thoughts after, and then we may get some reflections even after that. I don't know, but I'm kind of interested in these debates, but um, you got to kind of be careful with them too because, like, they've been having these debates for a while. They don't really shape much of the national conversation, nor do they change a lot of minds, but... As somebody who loves debates, I'm always interested in high-profile people being involved. Um, given that fact, we don't really get the best quality of debates from these, in particular from Jank, and even the moderation is absolutely awful, as, as in the no moderation, I should say. They don't really keep things on topic very well. They don't try to refocus when people go off topic, as happened often in, for example, the Jank versus Denise D'Souza debate. That went way off the rails to into avenues where, you know, they really just didn't have a lot um, of relevance to current conversation and they just arguing little petty details so in order to understand how these debates are going to go we need to analyze the characters and we've seen three of the four here we saw jank debate two people that i recall the two people he debated were um he debated in culture and then he debated denise d'souza last year um and then you have D'Souza, I think he's only had one debate, and that was with Cenk. Um, and then you had Shapiro, who debated Sally Kuhn last year. Sally Cohn, I guess her name's pronounced. Um, so, let's start off with the Cenk versus Ben Shapiro. How's that going to go? Well, we have a history with Cenk, and it's not a very good one with debating, and... He basically nearly wrecked two debates. He almost wrecked the one with Ann Coulter, but Ann Coulter kind of stood up for herself. Basically, he was trying to ad hominem her to death, and then she mocked him and she threatened to leave the debate stage, and he kind of got defensive. Um, and so, is that going to happen with Shapiro? Because it happened with Denise D'Souza last year, too. And the difference between Ann Coulter and Denise D'Souza is, whereas Ann Coulter defended herself and relentlessly mocked Jank for his personal attacks, Denise did not really defend himself that well. He was attempting to stay on topic, but when you're facing relentless character attacks and just butchering of your character, and you're not standing up for yourself... In the eyes of many, it just looks like you're on the defense and you lose, or you're not addressing your opponent, um, who is shouting louder than you, and you lose. So that did not go well with him, but last year, that wasn't even a debate, really. That was just an attack on D'Souza's character, and D'Souza tried to fight back a little bit to attack in TYT, and it just... It doesn't go well when you're facing an entire TYT army. So how's how's it going to go with Shapiro? Um, he debated Sally Cohn. Sally Cohn's debate was a very is by political standards a decent debate. They did not go low on each other. They did not, you know, it was a lot of a policy related debate. Um, and granted, Sally Cohn made some arguments from emotion, from morality. But it wasn't an attack on Ben Shapiro's character. So, does Jank have room for that kind of argument strategy against Shapiro? What I have a feeling is going to happen with that is 
Jank is going to attack some of Shapiro, you know, he's going to call them questionable moral statements, and he's going to try to paint Shapiro as morally obtuse. And how Shapiro's going to react to that, I really don't know. From his history of debating people, I think what he would do is he would try to take a swipe at TYT, and he would try to get them on a defensive from their reporting. But Shapiro's one of those, he's always going to bring it back to the facts. So Shapiro is a great PR guy, a very good debater, and he's good at getting his message across. Now, given that, Shapiro's main obstacle in this debate is going to be the audience. Politicon is notorious for Young Turks fans being there en masse, and they're going to show up, Jenks going to give them tickets, and they're going to be flocking to his Twitter. It's just a fact that basically, at Politicon, Jank is always going to have home field advantage. And that's going to be the huge issue for Shapiro. Shapiro, I have a feeling where he's going to win this debate is in the Q&A. Because, yeah, Jank is going to be his Buffalo self, and he's going to try to talk nonsense. But when it comes to the Q&A, you're going to have his fans pretty much regurgitate why they're cheering for the Young Turks. And Ben Shapiro is going to rip them apart because they're not going to have that same platform as Shapiro's been given. And Shapiro, he can fling the zingers around, and it's not going to affect Jank, you know, because, like I said, he's, Jank is going to be Jank. He's going to be arrogant, he's going to be flamboyant, he's going to be uh, attacking of personal character. He is not a traditional debater. His tactic isn't debating because his goal isn't to win on a platform of ideas and facts, debating facts and ideas. You know, as somebody who loves debates, it's a crying shame that he acts like this, but it's effective. It's effective in a political debate. And you saw that last year when he debated Denise D'Souza, who, yeah, he chose a very, very poor strategy. And Ann Coulter chose a good strategy because she understood you can't just let somebody pound you relentlessly with personal attacks. And so, I think Shapiro is going to win that debate in the Q&A session, because Jenk is going to be forced to defend the fans too, and that's where it's really going to go off the rails for him, because he's going to attempt to defend the indefensible, and Shapiro is going to corner him. And then Jank is going to try to obfuscate, you know, throw a red herring out there, but people are going to see through it. Now, Anna Kasparian versus Ann Coulter, that's a lot less predictable of an outcome, because I haven't seen Anna Kasparian in a debate setting. I haven't seen her debate a conservative period. Um, you've seen her have debates with Jank and the Young Turks, but it's not the same kind of debate as it's going to be with somebody who has a polar opposite ideology and viewpoint. Um, so, are they going to go low is the question. Now, we've seen Anna, as she talks, you know, when she gets fired up, she can get fired up. And I have a feeling she's going to act with a counterpunches mentality just because she's inexperienced. When you're inexperienced, you you don't you're not good at going on the attack, so you're looking for areas to counterpunch. So what I expect Anna to do is try to bait Ann Coulter into something where she feels like she can counterpunch, counter attack you know, something where she can respond to. But the thing about Ann Coulter is is that she's she will be civil. 
she will be civil until even about her most extreme points. And she is going to force Anna into being cordial and responding in that cordial manner toward some of those right-wing positions. And what's going to happen is that's where Ann Coulter is going to throw out facts and put Anna Kasparian on the defense. And I don't think Anna's going to be able to handle that. Because it's one thing to counterpunch against somebody who's inexperienced, but when you're constantly having a counter, when you're having a counterpunch against something very difficult, when you're not coming out in a forceful and attacking manner, you're going to appear on the defense, and that's how I think that's going to go. Um, Q and now, of course, Anna Kasparian, you got to remember TYT home field advantage, and also they co-host, so. They're attacking. Jank has experience with Ann Coulter. Um, so, you know, there's going to be a little bit of inside stuff being shared. I don't know if Ann Coulter and Ben Shapiro are going to work together on some kind of coherent strategy. I don't know how they work together specifically, if they even talk to each other, etc. But that's some kind of some insight in how I think this is going to go. Um... I think pretty much I just think Ann Coulter is going to eventually blow Anna away. I don't see Anna coming out in a forceful manner. Now, I could be wrong because I've never seen her, but just, it's like I said, when you don't have experience debating conservatives, and this was even me too, because when I was a liberal and I debated conservatives, I'd try to be cordial with them, and then they'd come at me with this extreme thing, but present it in a point-for-point -point manner where you're backing up what you say. That's not easy to argue against. Now, as I've gotten older, you know, I, I'm also more conservative, but when I argue with conservatives, you know, you need to have your facts ready because one thing about hardline conservatives, even when they're wrong, they're going to try to back up their arguments. You know, it's not just going to be based on feelings, based on platitudes and cliches and all that. You're going to get that from Democrats, but you won't get that from a public. And so, Anna's just going to get demolished. It's going to be a thorough ass-kicking by Ann Coulter. And quite frankly, on a personal level, that's going to feel good. Again, it may not go like that. Anna may be able to fight back, but I don't see it. I don't see it happening on a first debate, and it's just, it's not going to happen like that. Anyhow, this is my pre-pre-debate. And as usual, I'll be keeping up with the other stuff, and I'm sure we're going to hear more from all parties involved about the upcoming debate soon. And I will come with some more final judgments, probably 27th or maybe even the day of the debate, like my lazy ass always does. Anyhow, thanks for listening, guys. God bless.